Hello ladies and gentlemen and everyone else watching. Thank you for tuning in to Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. So phono stages. Phono stages can run from basically free, you know, whatever's uh, already installed or comes equipped in your preamp or your receiver to five figures, you know, for something really high end and exotic. Um, but you don't really have to spend that much money to get something that's worth listening to. So today we're going to look at the Shkiet Mani. Um, I intentionally mispronounced the, the name of the company because I don't think YouTube uh, likes the real pronunciation. But uh, the Mani is a phono stage, an entry level phono stage from them that many people say is, you know, as good as a, the best phono preamp under $500 or $1,000. Um, so I have one here today. We're going to listen to it and I'll let you know what I think. So Shita Audio was founded in 2010 by Jason Stoddard and Mike Moffat. Uh, Jason Stoddard came from a company called Sumo. They were good at uh, making amplifiers, uh, the Andromeda, Andromeda 2 and 3, the Polaris, uh, great big uh, AV amplifiers. They also made A Class A amplifiers. Uh, Mike Moffat was formerly of Theta, which uh, was one of the early pioneers in high-end uh, DA converters for uh, two-channel and, and home theater. Uh, so the company has, as far as I can tell, there's basically three tenants to the company. Uh, three kind of things that, that define what they do. Uh, the first is that they make uh, affordable uh, products uh, from entry level to you know mid price, but stuff that most people can afford. Uh, second thing is the sound quality of their products is usually um, exceptional, uh, a high consideration. I mean, they design it to sound good. I mean, that's that's what they're doing. They're making audio components that sound really good. So affordable, good sound, and made in the USA. So the Manny was actually built in the USA. The, uh, it was made in Texas. Um, the wall wart that comes with it, the power supply, was sourced from overseas, but the, the box itself and the whole unit and all the circuitry and everything inside is uh, sourced locally in the US. Um, so the Manny, uh, well-reviewed, um, when it came out, it was uh, $129 US was the uh, original retail price. I looked on Hi-Fi Shark and I can find them for anywhere between $89 and 150 euros. So sometimes even more than, than the original price. So if you were to buy one now and listen to it, even if you didn't like it, you could still, you wouldn't lose any money. You might even make some money if you got a good deal on it. Uh, so what is it? The Shit Manny is a small box. Uh, it's about the size of a iPhone box, uh, and the weight of it is approximately the same as uh, three very ripe bananas. Um, on the front panel, you're going to see there's a uh, white indicator light to show that it's on and the logo. A um, couple screws on top. Around back, if you look on the back, you're going to find the four um, RCA connectors, uh, single ended only. Uh, nice gold plated connectors are held in there pretty securely uh, so two in two out left and right you have your grounding post uh, there's the on off switch and then the entry for the uh, the plug for the power supply uh, once you remove the four screws on top you can uncover that and uh, you're going to see the printed circuit board it has a variety of nice capacitors on there uh, nichicon uh, wema capacitors um, what looks to be the, the part of the power supply, um, the entry to the, uh, the power going into the Manny is 16 volts AC. So usually wall warts uh, have an A, they're like a switching power supply and they provide DC power. Um, this one, the, the Manny, and I guess some of the other uh, uh, Shita products, they work on AC and then they convert the AC to DC for the circuitry uh, within the unit. So. 16 volt AC input and uh, has the AC to DC conversion on the board. You flip the board around and you see on the bottom, you'll see the uh, op amps. There are uh, 8066AR and L49870s. Uh, those are the amplification and I think uh, they're also involved in the RIA uh, equalization curves for the, uh, for the phono stage. Um, also, you're going to find uh, several dip switches. So the Manny has uh, moving magnet and moving coil uh, capability. 
so there's three levels of gain that are selectable with the two sets of uh, dip switches for gain. Uh, 30 dB, 48, and uh, 59 dB of gain. Uh, there's also variable loading, well, loading basically one setting for uh, moving magnet cartridges and moving iron, 47K, and then there's a 47 option for moving coil cartridges. Um, all that's held together in a nice uh, aluminum case, uh, and it's held together securely, feels good, um, and it's a quality uh, little unit. When you plug it in, I found uh, it's very economical on the electricity usage. It seems to be only drawing about two and a half watts from the wall, uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, the power switch is on the back, so if you leave it plugged in and turned on all the time, it's always warmed up, ready to go, and it's not going to take too much power from you. Okay, so the big question, how does the Manny sound? So I've got a, my, my reference uh, phono preamp is a Synthesis Roma. 79 DC. This is a tube preamp, uh, made in Italy. It is retails for about 10 to 15 times what the Manny originally retailed for. Uh, is the Manny in the same league as the Roma? No, it is not. Um, anything that the Roma does, uh, the Manny is comes up short. Um, you know, frequency extension, both ends, uh, the Rome was better. Uh, sound stage depth, width, um, instrument separation, uh, the reality, uh, the texture of the instruments, um, pretty much all that. Everything that you would listen for, the Roma does better. I've had a couple phono preamps, uh, MoFi, um, uh, the, uh, the black cube as well, uh, and these were good phono preamps. They had some shortcomings in, in some ways, uh, you know, either the, it didn't sound, it wasn't weighty enough or there wasn't enough detail or something. Uh, they did some things great, they, did, they, were, they had shortcomings in others. Um, and listening to them, the, the shortcomings always kind of bothered me. You, you could always pick up on it. Um, the Manny, it has shortcomings, um, but it's satisfying to listen to. Uh, it does enough things right that it, the shortcomings aren't really called to attention. Uh, so you can put it on and you can listen to it and you can be completely satisfied with it. Uh, I mean, uh, in your mind you might know that you're not getting you know, the, the best of the best, but listening to it, it's very satisfying. You've got great bass, great detail, you got soundstage width and height and depth, um, you've got uh, tuneful bass, you've got uh, uh, dynamic contrast, uh, it's exciting to listen to, so it does a lot of things great. Um, and, and so it, it's, uh, you could put it on and without comparing it to something else you'd be really happy to have it I think. So I listened to a bunch of stuff uh, while evaluating it. And uh, here's, here's a couple of standouts. Uh, so this one here, this is um, Patterns in Sound. It's kind of a late 60s um, audiophile test record sort of thing. Um, their deal with this was they recorded it on a 35 millimeter magnetic film. Uh, so I guess the, the, the recording medium for, for the master was uh, a higher quality. And there's a bunch of... Um, folk music, uh, big band, jazz, and uh, I was grooving along to it. It, it sounded pretty good. Um, at one point, though, it uh, it sounded like I was overloading the, the, the preamp, and so I uh, I turned the gain. I had the gain at uh, the, the middle setting. Uh, I put it on the low, the lowest uh, of the gain settings because I thought it was maybe, you know, my cartridge's uh, three millivolt output shouldn't be overloading it, but I thought, oh, maybe I'll just, maybe it's something with this has a lot of diamond, dynamic range or something, I don't know. So I turned it down and uh, it still heard kind of that uh, bit of a distortion. When I put my synthesis preamp into the system and listened to this again, it, it was obvious that uh, this, I, mean, I bought this record used, uh, someone had played it with I think a worn out stylus and if you've ever heard a record that's been played with a bad stylus, 
there is a bit of a mistracking distortion that, that you hear, especially in, in the loud, uh, in the loud um, sections of the music. And with my synthesis, it was obvious that was what was happening. Um, on the Manny, you could tell something wasn't right. It wasn't really obvious what it was. So that's uh, a bit of detail that uh, was missed with, with the Manny. Um, this is Roger Waters' Radio Chaos. This is Roger Waters' uh, solo record from the late 80s, I think. Uh, kind of a concept album um, about a, a guy that uh, picks up radio waves with his head. And, and you know, it, it's kind of a precursor of uh, internet, uh, the internet, it seems, uh, reading a little text down there. Um, and uh, war games, and uh, it, it's an interesting, uh, interesting concept. Uh, I like the recording. I like the music on it. Uh, it's got a lot of sounds. It's got a lot of depth. It, it's kind of um, some of the songs emulate different Pink Floyd eras. I, I find, um, but it's got a you know, kind of an '80s sound to it as well. And there's nice deep synth in there, and there's a lot of uh, complex instrumentation. Um, so the bass was really impactful. Uh, you could hear the texture of the, the bass guitars and the synth. Uh, you could follow the notes really easily. Uh, there was nice soundstage width and, and depth. And uh, you could hear a lot of what was going on. His voice was uh, really articulate. Um, but, you know, switching in the, my other preamp, you could tell the instrument separation uh, with the, the Manny, it was more of a, a mass of, of, of synths and, and, and sounds uh, with the other phono preamp. Uh, you could really pick them apart. It, it was much more obvious, uh, you know, each individual instrument that you were hearing. But uh, still, with the Manny, uh, a very enjoyable listen. Uh, this is uh, Kasami Washington. This is a harmony of difference. Uh, this is a really cool album. Um, it's a jazz uh, quite a few instruments going on here. Not quite big band, but uh, uh, the one side has a bunch of different tracks, and then the other side is a song I think it's called Truth, and it's basically a long compilation where he takes the rhythms and melodies from all the from each individual song on the other side, and he combines it into one big track. It's it's really cool. I mean, the the drumming, um, the really well recorded drums and uh, big atmospheric uh, soundstage to it. Uh, so again, the bass was really powerful. Um, the sound of the instruments was really good. The, the texture was good. Uh, the sense of scale was definitely smaller than with my other phono preamp. Um, but uh, it, it was still really fun to listen to. It was dynamic and, and exciting. I mean, I think that's what uh, that's what's on this record is uh, is there's a lot of a lot of excitement and a lot of interest in, in music and, and that really comes through with the Manny even if it doesn't have the, the last amount of um, maybe bass extension and instrument separation and uh, it, it was even more dynamic with with my other uh, preamp. This is uh, kind of one of my original test records. Uh, I really like this album. I love the way it's recorded. I love the sound of the instruments. I love uh, Mark Hollis's voice. Um, and the songs are really interesting. Um, and it was a, it was a good test for, uh, for, you know, upright bass. Uh, you could really tell, you can really follow along with the bass line. Um, you could hear the, the sound stage. You could pick out, uh, the, children's chorus in, in one of the songs um, and it was really interesting to listen to instrument separation it's a more it's a simpler um, simpler instrumentation on this than some of the other records uh, and I found that helped out the Manny it was better to listen to this uh, on the Manny in, in terms of instrument separation it was uh, it was easy to pick everything out and uh, hear the details of all the in individual instruments uh, with uh, Talk Talk. Um, Art Blakey, Night in Tunisia. This was uh, this record really highlighted the uh, the fun factor of the Manny. I, I found uh, it was very dynamic, uh, and and the speed and the quickness with which uh, 
the, the drumming was uh, presented was, was really good. Um, interesting, this one was where I picked out kind of a thinness through the mid-range though. Um, the horns uh, and toms, they, they just didn't have that, that kind of meatiness, that, that uh, fleshiness uh, that you would hear. Uh, I mean, comparing it to a, a really good uh, tube preamp, you're not going to hear that. And I, I could hear that uh, missing from the Manny, but it was still it made it exciting to listen to. So, in the end, that's the Manny. Um, really satisfying to listen to. It does live up to the hype, I'm going to say. It's, uh, it's really good. Uh, I think it's biggest advantage is the fact that it's so even-handed. Uh, it does so many things well enough that it doesn't call, its shortcomings don't call attention to themselves and uh, you can be very happy listening to this. Well worth it. Uh, about a year ago I know they came out with a Manny 2 which uh, had a bump in sound quality I guess. Um, I know it does have more loading options and a subsonic filter. Um, uh, I've never needed a subsonic filter. I guess I don't have very rumbly turntables, but uh, you know, I guess there's enough people out there who do need a subsonic filter that uh, they included it in the Manny 2. The power supply for this is a, like I said, it's a 16 volt AC wall wart. There are companies who make aftermarket uh, power supplies. Now I have had good experience with a um, linear power supply for my uh, for my DAC. Uh, so I'm curious to know what a different power supply, beefier power supply, would do to this. Um, so if you're interested, leave me comments. If I get 50 comments on the video, I'll go and buy uh, one of the power supplies and I'll listen to it and I'll do a follow-up video on, on what the power supply does to the Manny. Uh, so thanks again for watching. Uh, this is Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. Uh, if you like the video, please click like, please subscribe so I can bring more videos to you. Uh, check me out on Patreon, Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. Uh, with the Patreon, I'll post some extra content, and uh, by supporting me there, you can help me to um, access more equipment that I can show to you and uh, do some videos on. Um, I know there are some channels who don't do really negative reviews. Uh, if they don't like something, it is prefer not to say. For me, any equipment that I'm interested in, I'm going to listen to and I'm going to report on. Um, I'm basically doing this because, you know, I want to produce something that is something that I'd like to see. Uh, opinions, uh, good or bad. Um, so, you know, I, I'd like to see that. I hope you guys like to see that. If you do, uh, check me out on Patreon, subscribe, like the videos, and uh, keep watching. Thanks for spending your time with me. Have a great day.